Venus and star blessings. Hey, everybody. When it rains, it pours. So this, uh, I'm about to talk about the full moon in Aquarius, which is square Uranus. And let's think to where this, I just want to make a few general comments about where this cycle began and some of the things as well before we jump into delineating some of these uh, <laughs> these uh, features of this uh, full moon. So it started at the new moon in Leo, right? You'll remember that two weeks ago and the full and the new moon was opposite Pluto. And I do recall distinctly saying this cycle is going to be incredibly intense and not easy. And personally, for me speaking, it hasn't been easy. It's been incredibly difficult. And here's the point I want to bring up about that. I don't want to talk about my personal circumstances, but I just want to remind people that, for instance, in my situation, it's been nothing to do with me, but it's been around people that are very close to me. And the impact that the circumstances are having on them are equally impacting on me. So this might be you. You might be in a situation where certain people are being affected by this particular cycle, for instance, and it's not necessarily your own personal circumstances, but it is theirs that's just impinging on you. You know, it's being dumped on you, so to speak. Although really we can't really um, blame anybody because we allow what we allow into our field, into our life, into our mind, into our heart, into anything. So this is a very, very, very uh, super duper cycle intense because it started with the opposition to Pluto and now it's square Uranus and the transcendent planets which are Uranus, Neptune, Pluto are very very difficult energies to handle through the personality in the third dimension reality they simply are they are not of this world if you like they are not of the personality they are not of the ego they're not of the um just the the everyday functioning of human being a human as it were they they challenge us to transcend our lower desires our um unconscious components our resistances our denial of things and so forth so everything that appears actually and this is the main point i want to make it's in in my opinion through my experience coco agrees <laughs> um Everything that appears, every illumination cycle, every other transit, doesn't matter what it is, whatever is appearing, it's just if we can look at it always it, as an opportunity to transcend these lower dimensions, these lower aspects of ourselves that are yet to evolve. That's what everything is. It's just a lesson for growth and evolution. But sometimes these lessons and, and growth spurts come in with such full force, particularly when you're talking about the transcendent planets, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. And that's what's involved here. The cycle started with an opposition to Pluto and now we have a square to Uranus. So there's uh, basically there's a lot of chaos. And I, I'm not, I don't even want to talk about the, the collective themes because that's just an, a whole other field, <clears throat> um, a whole other dimension that I, I just don't really want to go into, to be quite honest. I mean, most people are aware of what's going on collectively, you know, what happened with the Olympics. Just there's so much um, uncertainty still, you know. Incidentally, the uh, <clears throat> this cycle also corresponds to the news that just broke out yesterday about Matthew Perry. Now, some of you may have heard, some of you may have not, but basically there are five people being charged relative to his death, okay? They, they are basically responsible for his death. Now, he was a Leo. So what I'm getting at is that this, this new moon cycle opposite Pluto <clears throat> and Uranus coming in now squaring, uh, pardon me, yeah, squaring the full moon is an activation even for people who are not here anymore. I've seen this multiple times. For example, musicians, um, their music, certain aspects of their music might be revived at certain points, particularly when Pluto is involved. You know, there's all sorts of things that can happen even when we are not here physically anymore. So this uh, news and this uh, shock, as it were, that's come out now about Matthew Perry uh, involves, you know, five different people who um, drug dealers, you know, whatever they were or are, 
And I thought to myself, um, yeah, that's really interesting because it certainly corresponds to this cycle. But then I also thought, wow, imagine, you know, it's it's sad what happened to Matthew Perry, but there are so many people that die because of these um, drug pushers and drug dealers, you know, that uh, circulate around and uh, <clears throat> nothing happens to them. You know, it's just pretty diabolical. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting, just as a side note. Okay, so I will uh, share my screen and let's just look at the chart. And I probably won't stay on as long as I normally do. Anyway, okay, so he, here is the full moon. Uh, there's the moon at 27 Aquarius and there's the sun at 27 Leo. And it's, you know, it's, this is a very, 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 um, an extremely, you know, just classic, um, typical Uranian energy, right? Uranus rules Aquarius. It's squaring, Uranus is squaring this full moon. You have the sun and the moon and Uranus all at 27, the same degree, all of them. That's pretty significant to get them all lining up at the same degree. Basically, I'm expecting with this cycle, and things have already started already anyway, um, just really intense explosions, really uh, sudden uh, events taking place, different things taking a different turn, um, suddenly uh, shock being created, you know, all, all sorts of weird shit is, is going to happen with this cycle. And, of course, it always depends on, you know, what's going on in your life, where this... Uh, lunation cycle is is transiting in your own chart you know your own personal circumstances are always the key right and regardless of what's going on um if things are extremely volatile this this is this cycle would have been quite difficult and is quite difficult and will be until this full moon passes right um and it certainly does bring in um a lot of relationship matters and a lot of matters that have to do with you being, you know, super authentic and super real with your heart, you know, no matter what. Um, because the sun is in Leo, uh, the new moon, as I said, was at the degree of Venus's retrograde cycle, which was the previous Venus star point last year, which was the Venus morning star. So that this cycle kicked off all of that Venus in Leo stuff right, which is drama, basically, and it has been, <laughs> oh, there has been a lot of drama, right, from, from my observations and from people I know around me, close to me and so forth. So here it is now at the point where, you know, it squares Uranus and it's a full moon in Aquarius. So we, there, we, Uranus is always going to take us, you know, outside of our, our little left brain linear mind, right, and it helps us expand our ability to see and it helps us look beyond the the limitations and the um the, the narrow ways of looking at things perhaps so it, it can bring up shock because we were so side you know uh, blindsided or limited you know tunnel visioned and so forth right so this takes us into you know a, a bigger it's like the the brain, the field of of consciousness itself, if you like. It's right brain, Uranus, right? So we have to think outside the box. And with the moon being in Aquarius, it also implies that we must be um, objective and detached, but at the same time be true to our heart, sun in Leo. Incidentally, the sun is conjunct Vesta, the goddess Vesta, which I'm doing a class on her actually next week, ironically. And in this uh, full moon, the sun hasn't quite caught up to Vesta, but what is going to happen a few days after this, there's going to be a Kazemi conjunction between the sun and Vesta, a Kazemi conjunction, right, which means in the heart of the sun, and they are in Leo, <laughs> and Leo is the heart and ruled by the sun. So this is a very, very, very um, important uh calling if you like you know it's it's like a, a an alarm bell going off saying hey you know you really have to check in with being really authentic Aquarius moon in Aquarius 
with your heart and what you are actually doing, the choices you are making, the things you are allowing in. You know, this this is not just about the physical circumstances. This is about our, our energy field, our heart center. Energetically, everything has an impact. Everything is connected. The more we uh, open ourselves up to this, that, and the other, the more we allow our field to be infiltrated. Now, we've got to ask ourselves, do I want to be infiltrated by this particular energy or this particular person or this particular stream of whatever? But it is about having the courage, Leo, to stand true in your heart no matter what, no matter what, basically, but have enough uh, objectivity, moon in Aquarius, to be detached and see the bigger picture as well. But the bigger picture that, that's going to explode here is going to come with some shockwaves because of Uranus being in the picture. Now, in some instances for some people, it might be the very thing they need to snap out of whatever it is they're in. It's, it's going to be the very shock they need for that um, breakthrough to happen because Uranus rules breakthroughs. So even though it can be really chaotic energy and it can be very distressing depending on what's going on in a person's life it can also be the very thing that creates that that ultimate breakthrough that a person has really needed to you know to um disengage disconnect uh realign you know <laughs> basically see the bigger picture have an, a freaking aha moment and say, so, you know, okay, this, what the hell have I been doing? What the hell have I been thinking? What what have I been allowing myself to get involved with here? And so on and so forth, right? And it does bring in a lot of relationship stuff because all this is connected to the Venus star point. The sun is still in Leo. And Vesta, Vesta is such a mystical, complex goddess, and I'm not going to... Um, going to a teaching about her here. I did a video not long ago, actually, um, just about Vesta, which most of you really enjoyed that and, uh, you know, shared some of your comments about her and so forth. So if you anyway, if you want to do a deep dive, I'm doing a class, as I said, next week, and I've got some really amazing examples um, of, you know, famous individuals where, where you see Vesta really clearly playing out, right? But Vesta, in, in, in this particular instance, because what's going to happen is, as I said, the, the sun's going to catch up to Vesta, they're going to form that Kazemi, which is um, because she corresponds to devotion, the ultimate devotion. Now, what is the ultimate devotion here? The ultimate devotion is to align with our heart centre, to be really, really, really authentic and true to our heart, right? at the exclusion of everything else because Vesta corresponds to the focusing principle. It's about focusing on something very, very specific to the exclusion of everything else because Vesta represents purity. She's a priestess of purity. She remained celibate and took vows of chastity and, and so on and so forth, right? Now, there are other stories with the Vestal Virgins and it gets a little bit complex, but I'll talk about that in my class. But just as a, as a symbol and as a, as a metaphor, a symbol for this archetypal priestess, she really does correspond to being pure and devoted to that thing, that one particular thing. And in this case, as I said, it's Leo. So it is the heart and it's going beyond the narcissistic bullshit that Leo has a tendency to go towards. We know that Leo, I mean, any sign can be narcissistic. That's a fact. So any individual can be narcissistic. But the truth is that Leo has the ultimate signature of narcissism ingrained within it if it takes that um, that aspect of Leo, which is just a very uh, self-absorbed, unconscious uh, personality level of Leo very unconscious. So this is an opportunity to, to transcend beyond any of those narcissistic tendencies or individuals around you who might be narcissists. This is about going to the core, going to the hearth, Vesta, the hearth, the flame, 
She is the sacred flame. That sacred flame is inside your own heart. So this is a, a, an invitation to tend to that sacred flame within. Why? So that we can transcend what we need to transcend within ourselves. Why? Because that's why we are here. We are here to grow and evolve. Everything that comes along, as I said at the beginning, is always an opportunity to grow and to evolve and to transcend, to clear karma, to clear paths, to wake up, to make better choices, to make better decisions. It's as simple as that. Now, Mercury is still retrograde in this picture and also very close to the sun. So that really just speaks to what I've sort of previously touched on, which is that Mercury was uh, connected to that new moon from the point of view of, as it entered Leo, it was going to activate that Venus star point as well. It's gone retrograde. Uh, it's going to go, you know, uh, like I think it's, um, what is it, about halfway through or just over halfway through. So we've still got a, a, some unfinished business there with regards to the Leo Venusian stuff, relationship stuff, right? Um, so there's some processes here that still haven't uh, cleared up relative to our thoughts, our thought processes on certain things that have been going on in that Leo area of our life, particularly with the Venus star point lighting all that up, right? With a new moon in Leo opposite Pluto. It's, it's that cycle started with a dramatic, intense um, pathway that would have involved for, for various individuals, again, depending on what's going on in your circumstances, um, some, some really painful uh, deaths, endings, or, you know, confrontational drama. To, to get to the point where things just need to move, uh, clear out, and with now the halfway point, full moon, square Uranus, if if we haven't um, if we haven't managed to align ourselves correctly, now correctly is under no one's uh, personal point of view or perspective. This is about you knowing what is correct for you. Nobody can tell you what's correct for you. Only you and your soul so if you have you know try to be try to correct this this path with this lunation cycle then the uranus factor might just be um more of an exhilarating uh, electrifying uh, liberating type of experience that won't be so um disturbing or distressing but it depends on what's going on in your life for others it might be very distressing because it'll really shock the core, so to speak, right? But once again, like I said before, it, it offers a breakthrough. It, it you know, it, it releases something that, that has been holding on to this um, tension, if you like, you know, story, um, storyline, um, theme aspect of life. You know, there's there's been a holding of that. And this Uranus is just squaring this full moon enables us <clears throat> to break free of that right, to liberate ourselves, but it can come through in, in quite a volcanic, explosive manner. That's that's the, the difficult bit for some people. And also, you know, we've got this Mars-Jupiter conjunction that we've had all week. That's really explosive energy as well. And whilst it's in Gemini and it obviously corresponds to, um, well, it can correspond to a lot of conflicting information, arguments, um things that are not so pleasant uh, because Mars is a malefic at the end of the day and, you know, in Gemini it's words on steroids, you know, it's it's speaking and saying things and <clears throat> regretting later that you said this or that you sent that message or that you engaged in that conversation or, you you know, blah, 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 right, can be any, any and all of those sorts of things, right? It's a very intense energy, Mars conjunct Jupiter. You know, at a creative level, it, it's extraordinary. You know, it can be an abundance of, of energy flowing through you to, to write, you know, a, a book in, in that moment, so to speak, right? No one writes a book in a moment, but you get what I'm saying. Like it can be, you know, it can really release this extraordinary, um, uh, you know, willful um, desire, right, to, to really do something very creative with that Jupiter and Sage. But on the downside, because Mars is a malefic, it can be explosive, conflicting 
conversations, dialogues and words and thoughts and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, of course, at the same time, you've got Saturn squaring the Jupiter, which is the first quarter square, which I have spoken about, I think, several weeks ago, so I'm not going to unpack that again. But this is an important transit, which is exact right now. It's the first quarter square of the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that occurred back in 2020. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of uh, layers of things, you know, just kind of all emanating, illuminating, if you like, out of this full moon. And I've got to be honest, none of these energies are easy. You know, really they're not. But it's a test of our spiritual will. It's, a, it's always a test for us to return to source, as it were, within us, in our consciousness, in our heart. It, it's everything is always an opportunity for that. It's a test of our spiritual will. Here we have Saturn opposite Venus as well. And I spoke about this, I think, I don't know, last video, second last video, I don't remember. But I did say that when this comes up, this is going to be some sort of separation in relationships again at that you know everyday mundane exoteric personality level that's ultimately what that's going to be if you're in a, a difficult toxic relationship or unfulfilling relationship or just you know it's not working anymore whatever it may be but at a higher level again right in terms of our own the tests for our divine spiritual will so that we can come in further alignment with that, this Saturn opposite Venus, once again, is about actually us aligning with the higher spiritual uh, components of Venus. She's an evening star at the moment. So she's the goddess of, uh, she's the Aphrodite goddess of love as an evening star. That's her primary energy. Have you noticed her in the sky, in the evening skies? She's shining uh, so brightly at the moment. She's just gorgeous. But anyway, um, in her evening star face, there's, there is a lot of focus on love and uh, romance and um, desire and, you know, all the relationship stuff. But when it's happening at that really unconscious personality level and, and everything's about your own sensual desires and pleasures and what you want and how you want it and things like that, things can get very, very messy, especially when you've got a Saturn opposite Venus. It's Saturn's going, no, stop. Clear this shit out. Venus in Virgo, clean it up, clean this mess up, whatever it is. And this is happening right during the full moon, pretty much. She's just a degree past the exact opposition. So this has been in play pretty much all week as well. Right. So there's been this week has been what day is it today? It's Saturday for me. So this last week that we've had has had really volatile energies building up. And what happens during a full moon? It basically everything gets a spotlight on it. Right. It's all seen. It's all like it's like the dirty laundry is out there for everyone now to see, so to speak. Right. Everything gets illuminated for better or for worse it all comes to some type of culmination. It comes to a head, right? Spotlight. <laughs> so it's a very volatile energy and it's a super moon. And as I said, every uh, full moon that we have remaining for 2024, they are all super moons, every single one of them. Pluto is retrograde in Aquarius, getting ready to go back into Capricorn one last time. So the rest of this year is very, very crucial for our spiritual evolution, our spiritual alignment, getting our shit together and clearing out the past, clearing out what we have finished with, you know, resolving things within ourselves as well. Pluto in Capricorn is just one final turning point and then it's done. Then we've got a 20-year journey of Pluto in Aquarius. So you can see the rest of this year is, is really, really, it's volatile, it's crucial, and it's important that we get things right. Not for anybody else. It's not about what anybody else thinks of you or your life. You're not responsible for what people think of you or whether they like you or whether they don't. 
<clears throat> none of that fucking matters. What matters is, are you okay with what you are in and the steps that you are taking? Are you being authentic with your own soul's desires, with the alignment with God, source creation? That's it, basically. And Vesta, being a mystical, uh, deeply complex, soulful goddess, she represents aspects of the soul. The work that we do on our soul, to the exclusion of everything else, in private, closed doors, as it were. <clears throat> it's very private and very sacred work. And here she is coming with the sun. It's such a beautiful energy, actually, you know, at a really um, clean and um, higher vibrational level. This is a beautiful energy for our own alignment with our heart flame, sacred flame, and also being really um, authentic you know, full moon in Aquarius. That's about it, to put it very simply. Um, also, I did notice that the asteroid Achilles, which is a really powerful asteroid for me personally because that's my father and that asteroid happens to be on my ascendant, which is my soul connection with my dad. So I pay attention to that asteroid. And I think that it does show very significant things um, at different times in people's lives. The the old expression, your Achilles heel, right, um, is what, you know, potentially can be uh, revealed or activated and so forth when the transiting asteroid of Achilles is prominent uh, at some point. And at this point, it's actually conjunct the sun. It's in uh, late degrees of Leo. So the Achilles heel here will have something to do with not honouring our own heart in the choices we have made and what we are doing. We are not honouring our heart. And that's the fucking wake-up call here. Honour your heart. Be authentic. Moon in Aquarius. Find that break point, that release point, Uranus, to break free and take advantage of the breakthrough moment that comes in because that's what's coming in. It's electrifying. It's unsettling. It's going to be pretty chaotic, but there's a lot of opportunity for really um, authentic alignment here, simply put. I'm going to sign off here because I uh, just need to tend to some things and um, I'll see you guys very soon. Uh, as I said, you know, you're welcome to join the Vesta class, which is going to be amazing. All my classes are amazing. I think so. And certainly my students think so. So it's not just me saying it. Um, that's not an egotistical comment, by the way. I'm saying it from a real heart center because I know what I put into my classes. I know how much love and energy and how much um, time I spend uh, putting it all together. So they are very valuable. And the, the reason they are valuable is because I value them, right? I put tremendous worth and value and soul energy into everything that I do. And even just doing this video today, the same essence is coming through from that space, you know? It's real. It's authentic. So uh, get in touch if you want to check out that class. And speaking of classes, this is my second course and we're nearly towards the end of it. There's a few more classes left, all on goddesses. Um, so if you want to know more about that, email me. And then the third course is um, going to be later this year, which I'm going to be preparing. But uh, preparing, And that's going to be um, more advanced material. So depending on what level you're at you may be interested in that course uh if, if you are you know send me an email so i can kind of add you to the group list for when i've created the curriculum for what that third course is going to contain right um <clears throat> so uh yeah just uh with, with this energy that's it's two days away and so it's building up right now just um breathing exercises are, are really powerful and also um you may have heard of the the tapping technique well it, it, and just try this yourself right if you are to tap your your head like this okay do it all over 
like not super hard. You don't want to bash yourself. <laughs> just tapping lightly, okay? But all over your face, your ears, back of your neck. Just do that to your whole head. Do it for one minute. Do it for one minute and let me know in the comments what it felt like because basically what that does is it calms your central nervous system down. It clears your mind. It releases energy and you'll feel different in just 60 seconds. Little things like these are Virgo techniques, by the way, and Venus is in Virgo. Little things like that can uh, potentially shift a, a very intense and volatile moment that can be um can lead to things that are unnecessary and hurtful as well. So just as a side note, see you soon. Much love and hope you are all doing well. Let me know in the comments how you're all doing. Okay, bye for now.